Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. I'd like to try and demonstrate how rising above a flat plane allows us to see farther across that surface, whether it's the sea or the land, uh, using these uh, tables behind me. Let's go take a look. So I have here uh, a couple of tables joined together, uh, about the same height, and they've got uh, straws and chopsticks on them, each uh, 20 centimeters apart. Uh, it doesn't really matter about the distance, uh, but that's the setup, quite a simple one. And obviously I would love to have this going way off into the distance, but um, unfortunately that's not possible. So if we just uh, take ourselves down to the edge of the table, there's the edge right there, okay. Straight away, we know this is um, a flat surface and uh, it's trying to rise up to the midway point, but obviously it's not long enough to do that. And we can only see, we can see a, 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 all of this detail here, but uh, uh, this, uh, between these two, uh, we see less and uh, so it goes on. Uh, but of course, as we rise up, we start to see more and more of the gaps between the chopsticks and we start to see the red table over there and so even though that table is about a meter long it's very condensed in our vision at the moment and it's not until I get much higher up that I can see further across it of course it's there it's always there in our vision but it just becomes condensed compressed and of course a little bit blocked by everything else that's going on whether these are waves or dilations in in the surface whatever you're never going to get a completely smooth natural surface it's always going to have bumps raises distortion in it but this just very simply should show you that the surface appears to extend out in front of us while we stay horizontal and we are all, we are clearly not tilting down to see more we are simply going up and we see more we see further it really is as simple as that we are not seeing down a curve everything is just as we perceive it with our eyes And just to drive the point home a little more, I've put smaller straws between all of the other straws. I hope you can see those against the white tabletop. Uh, but we should just get a better impression of how things get condensed over distance. So I'm coming down to the table edge now. And of course, we just can't see the straws that are between the chopsticks here. And again, if we rise up keeping the camera level we just get to see a lot more a lot further a lot more detail and we get to see more of those white straws we come down and of course those distant straws become invisible even the entire red table becomes invisible not because it's gone down a curve or or anything simply there's a limit to how far we can see things in front of us. If I do tilt it down, it really doesn't make that much difference. We still have a similar effect. stretches out ahead okay so now I've added a toy soldier to the mix so he is on the surface and if we come back over here 
and just play around a little bit really uh, just zoom on in on him for now I've got the camera resting on the table so of course we can see he's partially cut off by the uh, straws and chopsticks I've just got the camera resting on the table and if I zoom out first and raise the camera of course we get to see more again we can now see all of the soldier come back down again I'll try and zoom in it just all gets very very condensed the further down the line we go So there you have it, it's really as simple as that. What you see is what you get, and seeing is believing, and knowing to an extent, at least knowing that we're not on a spinning ball, we are on a flat plane, and rising above it will help us see further across it. But we have people uh, performing all kinds of mental gymnastics uh, to uh, justify how the horizon always rises to to eye level no matter how high or low you go and of course it becomes very mixed there is no um, uh, standard response for how that happens some will tell you um, we are looking into a a curve that is or a bulge that is rising in front of us because of this typical illustration of perspective on a ball or the distance to the horizon on a ball being being illustrated with a stick man who's looking down rather than straight ahead but in everyday life um, surveyors are using uh, theodolites and um, aircraft are flying with their horizon at the midway level they are flying straight and we see to ahead of us and to the side we see a flat horizon but somehow um, people will uh, if we're not having a curve or a, a rise bulging in front of us we are suddenly then looking down this curve and somehow even though a plane for example is flying straight and level um, people will justify the horizon rising to eye level level by saying that the planes actually heading down around the curve so it just doesn't make any sense but um, this is the problem people have a fragmented view a compartmentalized view or um, perception uh, of of the earth because of this ball earth theory they find it very difficult to put it all together into one piece and this is the difference between flat earthers and um, uh, people who will defend the globe no end uh, despite being faced with all sorts of uh, contradictions in their heads they can explain away each piece of the puzzle but when you try to put all those pieces together they just don't fit we've got two different pictures we've got one that's a flat earth and one that's a ball earth but the ball earth one is just a jumble and a mess you never actually get all the pieces to fit together but with the flat earth they do you know so um, I hope this helps in some small way to just illustrate one aspect of the flat earth but a very important one for people to to get over and try and detach from the ball earth that is only in our heads because it's our eyes that create the horizon our eyes are the instrument with which we measure our surroundings and if you're going to be scientific about something you have to understand the instrument which you're using 
to perform your measurements. And we have a convex lens in our eyes, so do cameras, so do telescopes, and that's just the way we see the world. We know if we are going down a curve. And of course, uh, the horizon rises to almost eye level. Got to say this because I keep getting accused of flipping backwards and forwards, but there's always a band of convergence. Obviously, the higher you go, as we saw just now, the more detail you see right in, right in front of you, and that extends, but it eventually gets to a point where everything becomes more and more condensed, and we just cannot see beyond that, because we are looking at reflected light coming into our eyes, and if we are close to the surface, all that reflected light is coming into our eyes, the lower half of our field of view, and it just becomes very, very condensed. It's light is information, and just like a computer that's attached to the internet with a wire, there's only so much information that can come down that wire. The computer can only see the information that is arriving in the computer. It can't see the information that's coming down the wire. It's the same for us. There's a point where we cannot see the information, the light, reflected light, most of the time, that is beyond our horizon. And of course, horizons are a very personal thing, a personal perspective. I hope it helps. Looking forward to receiving the usual um, idiotic comments and some pleasant ones as well. So thanks a lot to everyone who's been supporting this uh, just with um, good words, kind words. It's really very much appreciated. Um, as a flat earther you get a lot of hate, but uh, the occasional person that pops by and says thank you or that's helped um, clarify something makes it all worthwhile. Thank you very much.